probability is the chance that some event will happen. It is given as a real number between an inclusive of 0 and 1, or as a percentage between an inclusive of 0% and 100%. A probability of 0 means the event will never happen, and a probability of 1 means that the event will always happen. We can show the probability of an event happening on a probability scale. The measure on the probability scale ranges from naught or impossible to one and certain with one half and an even chance halfway between. We can also measure a probability with a percentage. For example, there is a 45% chance of rain. This example illustrates some of the important definitions used in probability. Alex tosses a two-rand coin ten times. He decides that he will call the side with the buck's head heads and the side with the badge tails. He counts how many times it lands on heads and lists his observations for the ten tosses as head, tail, tail, head, tail, head, head, tail, head, head. Each time Alex tosses the coin is an experiment or trial. The result is uncertain. The outcome is the result after each toss. The coin will land either on heads or tails each time. An event is the result we are interested in. The event that Alex is interested in is getting a head when he tosses the coin. The sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. In Alex's case, each outcome from 10 tosses of the coin will make up the sample space, written as open curly brackets, head, tail, tail, head, tail, head, head, tail, head, head, close curly brackets. We write the number of outcomes in a sample space as n brackets s. In this example, n brackets s is equal to 10 corresponding to the 10 outcomes. The complement of an event is all the other outcomes. Complement of the event get a head is the event get a tail. The events of getting a head or getting a tail are mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive events are events that cannot happen at the same time. If a single coin is tossed, it cannot land on heads and tails at the same time. You will either get a head or you'll get a tail. You cannot get both at the same time. We say that tossing a coin is a mutually exclusive event. Independent events are events where the outcome of the second event is not affected by the outcomes of the first event. Each toss of the coin is an independent event. When a previous outcome does influence another outcome, we say the events are dependent. Dependent events are events where the outcome of the second event is influenced by the outcome of the first event. When all possible outcomes of an experiment have an equal chance of occurring, we can calculate the probability of one of the outcomes occurring. The probability of an event occurring is the number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of possible outcomes in the sample space. You will use the following probability identities for compound events. The addition rule for two events, A and B, that are not mutually exclusive. It states that the probability of A or B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus, and probability of A and B. It is used when two sets intersect. The addition rule for mutually exclusive events A and B. It states that the probability of A or B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B. This rule is used when the two sets do not have an intersection. It is a special case of the general addition rule where the probability of A occurring and the probability of B occurring is equal to zero. Another identity is the complementary rule, 
which states that the probability of not getting the event A, or the complement of A, is equal to 1 minus the probability of getting the event A. So the complement of getting a head is getting a tail. You will sometimes see A dash or A bar used to indicate not A or the complement of A. Another identity is the product rule for independent events, which states that if two events, A and B, are independent, then the probability of A and B occurring is equal to the product of the probability of A occurring and the probability of B occurring. We can use the product rule to work out whether two events are independent. Example 1. Independent events. For two events C and D, the probability of event C is 0, 0,2 and the probability of event D is 0, 0,63. The probability of C and D is 0, 0,126. Are the events C and D independent events? And justify your answer. The solution, independent events. For events C and D to be independent, we need to check if the probability of C and D occurring is equal to the probability of C occurring times the probability of D occurring. Let's start with the probability of C times probability of D. Substituting the given values, we get P of C times P of D equal to 0, 0,2 times 0, 0,63, which equals 0, 0,126. We are given that the probability of C and D occurring is 0, 0,126, since the probability of C and D occurring is equal to the probability of C occurring times the probability of D occurring. We can conclude that the events C and D are independent. We can use the probability identities to solve example 2. Example 2. Complementary events, the product rule, independent events, and addition rule. A and B are mutually exclusive events. It is given that the probability of event A is 0, 0,35 and the probability of event B is 0, 0,52. A. Determine the probability of not getting event A. B. Determine the probability of getting event A and event B. C. Are A and B independent events? Justify your answer. And D. Determine the probability of getting A or B. The solution? A. The probability of not getting event A is equal to 1 minus the probability of getting A. The probability of getting event A is equal to 0, 0,35. So the probability of getting the complement of A is equal to 1 minus 0, 0,35, which equals 0, 0,65. B, the probability of getting event A and event B is 0, since A and B are mutually exclusive events. C. The probability of getting event A times the probability of getting event B is equal to 0, 0,35 times 0, 0,52, which equals 0, 0,182. But in part B, we showed that the probability of getting A and B is equal to 0. So we can conclude that A and B are not independent, since the probability of getting A times the probability of getting B is not equal to the probability of getting A and B. And finally, D. We are told that the events A and B are mutually exclusive. This means that the probability of getting A or B is equal to the probability of getting event A plus the probability of getting event B. Substituting for the probability of getting A and the probability of getting B, we get 0, 0,35 plus 0, 0,52, which equals 0, 0,87.